Hi everyone, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, normalization right now. And normalization is an important concept because, as I mentioned in some of the introductory material, for something like um, K nearest neighbors, it's useful to have a normalized set of variables be part of what you're um, um, considering, right? Because then the distance metric isn't sensitive to the fact that maybe one variable is in the tens of thousands and one variable is in the hundreds of thousands. Before I got to that, I did want to follow up on the uh, data exploration by just showing you the final graphs that came out of those, right? So this is what I was able to output to my desktop, right? And you can see, again, you know, the details. Sometimes in the RStudio plots, it's hard to see all those details, but you can see a little bit more clearly in some of these. So, for instance, you can see a little bit better how the yes and no's match up um, or don't match up in this case, right? That there might be some difference about when people are likely to say yes versus no, right? Um, and in fact, if you look at the duration of target, that was the other one that looked interesting, right? There's definitely some differences there. So I just kind of wanted to show you that real quick before we then uh, go on and look at the normalization. So um, in the normalization, we're going to kind of look to see if we can figure out how to get all the data that we're going to be using to make a prediction about whether or not a particular bank customer is going to respond positively to a telemarketing call um, into a similar kind of space so that then the K-Nearest Neighbors has a better chance to work. And so here's the function that was we kind of skipped over before, but it's at the beginning of the class.r file that is up on Moodle. And you'll see it's called normalize. And it's a function of that only takes one input x, and then it will take the value of x, subtract off the minimum of x, and divide by the maximum of x minus the minimum of x. So, what does this actually look like? Well, if you go down right to where we're gonna start doing the numerical data, right, we're gonna apply all this data that we're going to normalize to it. So let's let's take let's look at just a simple example of normalizing the data. So I'm going to create a variable um, called you know x and I'll give it a bunch of random numbers, right? 30. Right? And then I'm going to normalize x. Oh, I have to read the function in, right? Forgot about that part. And I always type in the wrong window. I've got to click down here so I don't overwrite what I'm doing. Normalize X, right? And so what you can see it did was it took those values, right, and kind of scaled them uh, such that um, they're um, bounded in such a way so that they can be compared. So I can give another set of variables, right, that might be in a different format. And now I can normalize those. And as you can see, the numbers kind of roughly are in the same space, whereas before they weren't. Now, the X one I gave, it had a really extreme value, this 32,832, right? And you'll see that as a result, the numbers here are scaled a lot smaller than the numbers where I just did 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0.6. So what is the normalized function actually doing? It's essentially taking all the data that you're giving it and normalizing that data to be between zero and one, right? So it's going to set the maximum value to one. So that very large number in the first case, 32.83902, that becomes a one, right? And the lowest number, which in this case was a one, becomes a zero, right? And then for these variables, right, 0 0.1 to 0 0.4, the largest number was a one and the lowest number was 0 0.1. So that becomes your zero. And so it scale, it takes everything you have and scales it to that zero to one framework, right? And that allows us to compare across a bunch of different functions. So if you look down, down when we prepare the data for the um, K nearest neighbors, right? The first thing we're gonna do is we're, if you, if you remember the data, there's a bunch of fields here that are categorical and we could do a whole kind of mapping to numbers for those categories and everything like that. But a lot of times that's not really useful because a lot of times there isn't a a way to represent the relative position of those categories, right? Is, is married 
better greater than being single right it's not clear it's management greater than technician greater than entrepreneur it's not clear so rather than doing any of that we're only going to focus on the numerical variables for doing our classification for this one right and k nurse and anybody generally works better with that kind of data anywhere so we're going to look at columns 1 6 12 and 17. so what we did here was we said new data i want the data i want all the rows but I only want the columns um, of 1, 6, 12, 17, and the C kind of concatenates together that list of columns for us, right? Um, if they were all in order, if they were all like the first three columns, we could just write comma 1, colon 3 instead, right? But in this case, we're going to list exactly the columns we need. And so if we look um, up here, right, column 1 is age, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, column 6 is balance, right? Um, Column 12, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is the duration, right, of the last call. And column 17, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is just that yes, no variable. So that's the one that isn't a, um, a numerical variable, but we can actually translate that easily to a, ver a numerical variable. And we're going to grab that variable just in case right out of them. So then we're going to, this is a little bit of a tricky thing, but what we're essentially doing is we're calling this function called list apply. That's the inner function, right? And list apply is going to take those first three columns of numerical data. So let's see what those look like. Let's execute this code real quick, right? So if we look at the numerical data, right, it's just those three variables and then the Y value, right? So the first three columns are those three, um, uh, independent variables, the features that we're using to classify, right? Um, so we're going to apply to each of those as a list, right, the normalized function. What that's going to do is normalize each of those sets of data. So age will be normalized, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and then we're going to um, turn that into a data frame because the output of this isn't quite a data frame so we have to turn it into a data frame so we use it as data frame which it says interpret the output as a data frame and then we're going to do a column bind which would means we're just going to bind the um the columns that we just generated that are now normalized right to the y output variable so this will put all of our data into one specific place so we run the new data n and if we pull up and look at that right you can now see, so this is numerical data normalized. It now has all the age data, all the Y data, all the balance data, and all the duration data normalized. Now these are normalized within the columns. So the person who has the max balance, for instance, will have a uh, value of Y. So we can find that real quick, right? We can say new data and um, uh, with, um, Let's see, so let's see, what is it, what is it, what, uh, which max? So this is the one I always forget. Let's go look it up real quick. I always forget exactly. I know I just showed this in the other lecture. So there's max, right? Um, and then the particular one we want, is it which max? I always forget this. Uh, which max? Yep, it is which max. Okay, there it is. So which max? So we want num data and which max num data and string balance comma right so we want the we want the row that has the max column right and it's this one as you can see there's a balance of one right and so since the data is the same as the previous data and you're curious what is that balance right we can go to the one that's not normalized right and we can look at the same result and we see that that one has a balance of 102 127, dollars right? Well, I don't know what the numbers are here, but yeah, let's assume dollars. And in fact, we can double check this. We can say uh, we can say just max num data string balance. Sure enough, it's the same number, right? So that's just kind of a little bit of a verification and make sure our normalization code is working correctly, right? We can now basically split the normalized data into training and testing data, right? Using the numerized data. We probably should call these num train data n and num test data n, but for now we'll just do this because we're never gonna do it any other way. And so now we have our normalized data. So 
Now we have our data. It took us a while to get here, but we now have our data in a format that we can easily analyze using k-nearest neighbors, and that's what we're going to talk about in the next video.